Tyler, and I'm going to tell you the definition about core bearing evidence. So, core bearing evidence is evidence that supports a proposition that is already supported by initial evidence, therefore confirming the proposition. That just means it's another source of evidence to back up the case. Let's say Jimmy here was convicted of a crime, and there were bystanders that say, Oh yes, we saw Jimmy commit this crime. This extra evidence will lead to Jimmy's arrest, because it's, it strengthens the proposition. The Latin roots of the word come from the base core, or to make strong, and it's derived from the word robor, which means strength. Let's look at an example at our own straight Jesuit hallways. So, Russell starts beating Tyler up, but little does Russell know that Charlie is in the flight of upstairs above, filming the entire thing. Tyler goes to tell this random person, but the random person might not believe Tyler because it's one it's only his evidence that supports him. But then Charlie comes in with the film and provides conclusive corroborating evidence that Russell did in fact beat up Tyler. That's you. Pretty conclusive. This is important because it sways and dramatically changes people's level of support and opinion on issues. Corroborative evidence is a solid basis in which we can prove the existence of Christ through the use of other reliable sources, such as historians, in which they can look upon Jesus as a historical figure rather than a religious one. We shouldn't need corroborative evidence to prove Jesus, but some people, like the jury, struggle believing in something they have no evidence for. Therefore, using corroborative evidence that can help persuade those that cannot believe without the definitive proof. This isn't a case to prove Jesus existed. This is a case to show all the supplemental evidence that proves Jesus' existence. The belief that Jesus lived is supplementally supported by corroborative evidence writing and historical accounts from Roman historians, Jewish writings, and the disciples and other eyewitnesses' accounts. This evidence, much of which is from non-Christian sources, compiles with the initial evidence and undisputedly proves the existence of Jesus Christ in human form. My name is Titus Flavius Josephus. I was born 37 AD in Jerusalem and died 100 AD in Rome. I was born a Jew, a Pharisee, in fact, a Jewish sect that didn't take too kindly to Jesus calling himself the Son of God. However, I later defected to the Roman Empire. I am notable because in my book, The Antiquities, I write about history in a Jewish perspective for a Roman audience. In that book, I record the trial and execution of James, Jesus' brother slash cousin, and I mention him being the brother of Jesus, the one they call Christ. I mainly cared about political matters and the struggle against Rome, but I did have some brief information on Christ and based on how he was politically involved with Rome. I also wrote a more direct, lengthy account in the Testimonium Flavium, but it's controversial due to Christian inter interpolations. So I'm credible because I'm an important historian of the first century, and my records were written recently, less than a century after Jesus' death. So I provide that Jesus was, an, in fact, an actual person in history. I mentioned that people were already calling him Christ, and I historically confirmed certain parts of the gospel, for example, Pontius Pilate's execution of Jesus. Hello, my name is Tacitus, and I was a pretty famous historian in the Christ era. So... Why I'm important, I was a pretty reliable historian at the time, and I had very detailed, like, writings about Christ. And I wrote about the rise of Christianity within a century of Christ's death. So, I gave some pretty crucial information there. And I talked about the rise of Christianity within the Jewish population and the Romans, right after the death of Christ, like I said again. And I had reinforced material, like... It was backed up by other people too, and it was reliable.
And I, I mentioned the persecutions of Christians by the Roman Empire, Emperor Nero, and the execution of Jesus by Pontius Pilate. And a famous quote I had was, if you know who controls you, then you know who you may not criticize. And that kind of talks about uh, tyrants can control you and stuff, and emperors. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. What's that? You want to learn about evidence of Jesus' divinity coming from his disciples and other sources outside of the Bible? Well, most of the evidence of Jesus' existence and divinity comes from his disciples. After all, they wrote the four Gospels, which make up a decent chunk of the New Testament. However, we have evidence from sources such as Tertullian and Phlegon about events that happened in Jesus' life. Neither one of them actually knew Jesus personally, but they did record when the world went dark during his crucifixion. Jesus is also better documented than any other religious founder, including Muhammad, who, although we have his writings, did not have a biography written about him until several hundred years after his death. So, now we know that the Gospels are historically accurate thanks to corroborative evidence. They're not allegorical because of testimonies from those such as Tertullian and Phlegon. And we have evidence of Jesus' existence from many, many other sources other than just the Gospels. Oh, hello. I am Benjamin Rosenberg, a Jewish historian. Oh. You'd like to learn more about Jesus of Nazareth? Well, let's see. Ah, here it is. It seems we have some information on him in the Talmud. But it seems he was a heretic who practiced magic and was con justly condemned to death. I'm sorry, but it seems we don't have too much information on him as he was a heretic. And we don't really pay attention to them very much. It seems, but yes, it does seem like he was important, or we wouldn't have recorded any information on him. It seems that Jesus you know of did exist, and he did perform miraculous acts of magic, of course, nothing God-related. And it seems he was a teacher with disciples, but I don't really see why you care too much about this. Oh, you have to go? Well, okay then. I hope you found everything you were looking for. So Jesus' existence is confirmed by Roman historians who wrote about the historical aspect of his crucifixion. It's confirmed by the Gospels, which were eyewitness accounts of Jesus' life, and finally confirmed by Jewish writings, which said that, Jew that Jesus did do miracles.